must touch. I didn't say just say it. You know, when God gives instruction, you must touch. Because touching is a bond. Touching is love. I'm not talking the wrong, there's a wrong touching and right touching. Anyway, that's a story for another day. Now, what am I trying to say? The light of the day is really confirmed that God has given us his Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I have you read again? Is is this remain? Go ahead. He says, you are, remember, in Acts chapter 2, Peter was preaching and so many repented because God forgave them. Yeah. It's now confirming again that he has forgiven us. And he has given us his Holy Spirit and sin no more to move on. Amen. Peace in Yahshua's name. Uh -huh. He has given us the consequences for our wrongs. So try not to do it again. Don't go that don't don't go that lane again. Remember, remember what I said. One of the the, 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 the words God put in me yesterday. When the Israelites took the earrings, the gold, they molded something and they were offering sacrifices. And I gave the analogy of sacrifices to the way we treat one another. Wrongly, we are offering sacrifice to the wrong gods. Are you getting me? So God now. The punishment that was not emphasized, he's reminding us, remember, I, I literally destroyed 3,000, so do not be part of that 3,000. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Read that last sentence again, Prophet Elisha. Yes. We must praise Yahweh, our God. Everyone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What a wonderful message. See, eh? She didn't get really well on my own. Apostle, you got a hen now wagon. Then they got a hen now wagon. Hallelujah. That's what I just did is the topic of today. We're going to look into speaking in tongues, which is part of the gift of the Holy Spirit. How we don't have to engage ourselves with the speaking in tongues. I won't waste time. Just briefly, we'll talk about Go ahead, finish it up, son. Oh God, we're gonna shout hallelujah to you. Shout hallelujah! Yeah. Anyone who says God is not with us is making a big mistake. We may not have the we may, people who come here and look at us will think, ah, uh, nah, this church, mm, nah, that's not. But God is with us. I'm not saying God is not with others out there. Please, is this someone recording? I want to make sure because everyone who have opportunity, pay attention to the sermon from Saturday to today. There's something different God wants you to learn. For so long, when I see people speaking in tongues, it irritates me. But now, I know better. And I hope that you all will know better in quiet. When I hear people go, blah, 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 I'm like, this is what I just jack and shine. But they are actually communicating to Yahweh in their own spiritual way. They are actually talking to God. However, there are two trends of thought in speaking in tongues. There are two, two opinions. One group is the group that, um, how do I put it? Is a group who are curious with an open mind. And the other group, a group who say, these people are full of fire. They don't know what they're doing. Let us see these two groups briefly in Acts chapter 2. Open Acts chapter 2. Read it legibly for me. Acts chapter 2. Read from verses um, start, read from verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2. Amen. 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 And make it loud, son. Which is, we are sitting in Pentecost, remember, we have already talked about how Jesus said, go away from me in Jerusalem, which is the city. And there I will meet you. No, didn't tell us when, but it took him 10 days for that spirit to come. 
He told them, go that John baptized with water and blah, blah, blah. And then he said, according to the promise of God, you'll be baptized with the Holy what? Spirit. If you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have the best gift. And thank God we were baptized last night with the Holy Spirit. Continue. See, that's what we, in one place, some, one Bible verse says, in one accord. They were together in one accord. Means the unity we talked about. We've, we've passed that part of the lesson. Continue. Seven, uh, no, two. Seven and one wind. When you see the word wind, is the presence of God. When you feel the wind, there's a wind that will blow you. You feel this calmness in you. A lot of times we say we go outside, let's get some fresh air. You are trying to get the presence of God in you. Let me, oh, wow, the air here is so fresh. That is God being with the presence of you. Uh-huh. This was for the whole house, though they were filled. This filled the whole house of the first, uh, those believers, the 120 of them. The whole temple was filled. Uh-huh. Three, they saw something that looked like flames of fire. Flames of fire, that's why we had the candle to represent that flame of fire for us. That's how, why we had it. So that that, that flame of fire is equally the glory of God shining out of you. Uh -huh. The flame was separated and spread over each person there. See, each person, that's why each of us had to have our candle. Uh -huh. Four, they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, we were filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And they began to speak different languages. Okay, I want the verse that says, read that particular one that says in tongues. Different language means in tongues. Amen. Spirit give them utterance. I like this children's Bible because it break it down and it help our kids to thank God for that. Now, let us now see the two people, the two trends of thought. I won't take a lot of your time. If I don't finish this lesson today, we'll finish it another time. But I will try to go as fast as I can. Let's go to verse 11 and 12 of that same act. 11 and 12. 11 and 12, Acts chapter 2. Amen. Now, pause. Now, the 120 started speaking a language with thousands of people, language of thousands of people who were hearing them. Are you getting the point? The 120 were speaking a language, thousands of people, different, it's just like you go somewhere where there are, these are not Zimbabweans or they are not people from Nigeria or Igbo or Shona. They, you, you see them speaking Shona, but they are not Shona. That is speaking in tongues. Shout hallelujah. Amen. And then you say like, wow, they are speaking our language. This is weird. Or I go to a place, I know this is Af African American or Americans who don't speak Igbo. But they are speaking Igbo in the temple. That's why I said, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Spirit gave them the utterance to speak in tongues. And speaking in tongues is you're speaking the language of some tribes that are out there who could really understand you. Wow. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to the account of this now. Uh huh. Read. They were all amazed. See, speaking in tongues is trying to do two things. One is prayers and praise. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. Let's read a verse that is that the language they were speaking in tongues, look at the interpretation here. Prayers and showing praises to God. It's like that is given to God. Read it in a different version so that you see the vocabulary used there. Yeah. Verse 11 to 13 for me. So that when someone is speaking in tongues, uh, we're going to get to understand when is it necessary to speak in tongues? Because the Holy Spirit is given unto us. It's a gift, but not everybody ought to have that gift. And speaking in tongues is not something you go to school to learn. It is the Holy Spirit that what? Give it to you. Uh -huh. Speaking as it may. Amen. Crete and Arabia, we do hear them speaking our tongues. See, we do hear them speaking our what? Yeah, our tongues. The wonderful works of God. The, the 
Look at it. Tongues. The only two things tongues is doing is one, speaking the wonderful works of God. Uh -huh. And they were all amazed and were in doubt saying to one another, what mean it this? What, 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 what does this mean? Uh -huh. Keep reading. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Others mocked, others mocked and say. Now this is the second group. One group was amazed and appreciated that they were glorifying Yahweh. And this other that group were the first group is those who are curious and they have an open mind. When you hear someone speaking in tongues, just be curious, try to learn more about what and what it means. Uh-huh. Others mock and say, these men are full of new wine. They, 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 they are mocking them. They are full of wine. They, they are drunk. Right. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why when the Spirit of God is walking, it looks like you are drunk. When you are very happy, it looks like you are drunk. That's why when I first joined Sabbath, when I saw the Spirit moving somebody like this, I thought, oh, oh, oh man, what kind of witchcraft in church is this? Until God opened my eyes to understand better. I actually mocked them. I didn't know one day I would be tossed around with the Spirit as well. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So what I'm saying is, be the group that says, wow, that ought to be curious. Now, what? Why is it important for us to understand speaking in tongues? So that we don't continue making mistakes if you're part of the group that are mocking those who speak in tongues. We need to understand it is part of a gift. Okay? It is part of a gift. Our, our Paul's talked about gift in the book of Corinthians. That it is the God of Israel who gives gift. Now, I will conclude... Remember, the, I started with a topic that says, be part of the 3,000 that was saved. And we do not want to make a mistake. I, I just want us to understand a little bit. I may not have it all, but a little bit why the necessity and when speaking in tongues can be appreciated. Peace in Yashu's name. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter um, Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Read from verse 8. And I'll tell you where to start. Uh-huh. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Mm -hmm. Charity never fails. Now, this version says charity, but other says what? Love. And whether there be prophecy. Whether there is the prophecy? Prophecy, some verse says it will cease. Uh -huh. Whether there be tongues, tongues will cease also. Did that mean whether you are knowledgeable in something? It will vanish away. I want you to follow carefully. I'm focusing on. So, prophecy will eventually stop. I will help you understand today when is prophecy stop? When does tongues stop? When will it cease? Is it is is this are these things still in existence in our midst? Yes. I will assure you when prophecy, speaking in tongues, all blah blah, blah ceases. Now let's get to verse. Co continue reading. Continue reading. Uh huh. We know in part, and we prophesy in part. We know in part. We prophesy in part. Which means, listen now, which means these things are not criteria to heaven. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The gift God has given you, whether it be tongues, prophecy, whatever, it is not criteria to heaven. Pay attention carefully. However, it is part of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit don't give you the gift of prophecy, tongues, and all that. You ain't going to get it. God, hallelujah. hallelujah. Continue reading. But when that which is perfect is come. When that which is perfect, what is that perfect we're talking about? Uh -huh. Then that which is in part shall be done. Pause. Pay attention. That which is in part will be done with. That is, something perfect is coming. The thing that is part will be done with. Meaning speaking in tongues, prophecy. Um, what else is the other list? Knowledge will be done with. We are be, we're going to be done with these things. No more speaking in tongues. There will be a time there will be no more knowledge. 
it'll be gone because something perfect has come. And let us see what is that perfect thing that we don't no more need these stones. What is that perfect? So when that perfect will come, this part, this thing will be done with. Now, are you done with 10? Now, 11. Huh? When I was a child. You was a child. I speak as a child. I understood it as a child. Uh-huh. I thought as a child. Uh-huh. But when I became a man, uh-huh. I put away childish things. I put away childish now. Now pay attention to the next vocabulary. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. For now we see through a glass. For for now. For now. Meaning the now. What is it now? Yeah, right now. Mm-hmm. When is it now? The path of now. Right now. We, it's okay. What? It's been happening. The gift is a gift given by the Holy Spirit right now. Now, continue. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then... But then... Now, say that again. But then, face to face, uh-huh. now I know in part. Yes. But then shall I know even as also I am known. Pause. Then, what then means when we go to heaven. Shout hallelujah. There will be no more speaking in tongues. There will be no more prophecy because we are already with. There will be be no more prophecy because we are already with Yahweh face to face. We are already in heaven. So no need speaking in tongues. No need prophesying. The knowledge, you don't need it anymore because he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the deliverer. So that is the then. The face to face. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What Yahweh has done for us, it shall be permanent, 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 Now, the then is when we meet Yahweh face to face. We don't need all this anymore. But for the now, it's the part. The gift is the part. Okay. Are we supposed, am I supposed to be speaking in tongues in a large gathering? It can be confusing. Let me see that thing. I told, go to 1 Corinthians again, chapter 14, read verse 2. So that you see the two things that is supposed to be voiced out repeatedly in tongue speaking. There are two things. You, 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 you repeatedly, that is a praise. And the prayers in tongues. Uh huh. First Corinthians fourteen two. Uh huh. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Okay, an unknown tongue. Speaketh not unto men. You are not speaking to man. Mm-hmm. So don't go and expect anybody who is trying to shine because I speak to is speaking in tongues. You're making a mistake. You are supposed to be speaking in tongues to who? To God. To God. In fact, nobody should hear you. Speak blabbing or speaking in tongues deliberately. It has to be when those who can understand the language are around you. Shout hallelujah. So what we need to understand is you are speaking in tongues, you don't speak it to man, but to who? To Yahweh. Now, what am I trying to say when I said earlier on, I have misconceived that these people speaking in tongues, man, come on now. They are actually speaking to who? What is the point? Don't allow it to be distracted. Now, Paul even said, Apostle Paul, listen to this now, said that if you want to speak in tongues, go into your closet. Let it be you speaking in tongues to who? That's what Paul said. It's in the Bible. We will read it in a minute. Go privately and be speaking to God in tongues. Because he also said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Speak to the Lord. Because sometimes when someone is speaking in tongues, there are so many people speaking, they are drawing attention away from God unto them. So hallelujah. Either deliberate or not deliberate. I'm not saying speaking in tongues is wrong. It's okay. It's, it's a language. But at, when, when, if you can imagine if all of us are speaking in tongues and somebody that, is, that does not understand the language walks in here, it will be confusing to that individual. Are you getting my point? It becomes a confusion. That person, this people don't know what they're doing. They will leave. That's why Paul now 
said, read that again, verse 2 of that 1 Corinthians 14. You are speaking to God. That's why speak, speaking in tongues is just prayers and praise. Shout hallelujah. Amen. You're speaking to God. But let's assume small gathering like this, someone starts speaking in tongues. I'm not, well, I don't think that person is trying to speak to us. He's speaking to who? To God. But Paul is recommending to do the best you can Go do it. You can speak it in tongues in the gathering, but let it be something only you can hear you speaking in tongues. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let it be only you. That is, you know how you pray from your heart. You're speaking in tongues from your heart. So the holy gift of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. And I just want you to understand, do not discard or do not be ignorant of the Spirit. But however, if you're gifted in the speaking in tongues, try to just be you communicating with who? Don't let nobody shoot. If, they, if nobody around you that understands it, don't even speak it out. Because the Holy Spirit is not an author of confusion. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Unless the small gathering, everybody can understand it. If they cannot, you are just putting some of the great brethren, the children of God, into confusion. Some will leave the prayer they are praying and paying attention to the, 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 the tongue that you're speaking. Okay, we are still on first, first Corinthians. I'll be going to my closing a little bit. I want to really rush this really fast. I wish there is enough time. I know we're exhausted. I would have elaborated more. But now, on that first Corinthians 14, go to verse 18. Uh, uh, verse 17. Start from verse 17. Amen. Amen. Listen. Say that again. I thank God. I thank God. I speak with tongues. I speak with you all. Uh -huh. Yet in the church, I have lacked it quite a lot with my understanding uh -huh. that by my voice I might teach others also. Uh -huh. Ten thousand to God. I'm unknown. Uh -huh. Another person say, I rather. He says, I don't want to speak it in church. I'd rather speak more words that people will understand than speaking in tongues that people will not what? Paul was admonishing us. Now, what am I trying to do by elaborating on this? God is given the gift of speaking in tongues. Do not discredit anyone speaking in tongues. But you that is given the spirit to speak in tongues, try not to put the attention onto you. Amen. Just speak to God in private about it. Uh huh. Thank God we don't have that. Not, I'm preaching enough because we have it here. I'm just saying, these are part of the gift the Lord has given. Uh huh. 20. Skip to 20. Uh huh. Go ahead. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Go to verse 23. 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, mm -hmm. and all speak with tongues, mm -hmm. and there come in those that are unlearned mm -hmm. or unbelievers. Let's say all of us are speaking in tongues and somebody walking here. Uh huh. They will say, this is like mad. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. If all of us are speaking, that's the conception that they will have. Why is this necessary? If you are given the gift, now remember the first Corinthians also chapter 12 verse 14 also talked about Paul telling us all these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh-huh. That's enough. No, no, that's enough. Now, I just want to kind of break down speaking in tongues. Now, let me conclude on being part of the 3,000 that are saved. Moving forward, don't offer sacrifices anymore to other gods, to a golden calf. Moving forward, I want to do the best I can to show more love because if you read, the biggest Holy Spirit that will be given to you is love. Because the book of read First Corinthians in the end, chapter 14, verse 1, it says, pursue love. Read it. It says, pursue love. So, the biggest gift of the Holy Spirit you've acquired, let it be love. Let it be what? 
That's why Corinthians 13 says, hey, if you have all these gifts and you don't have love, you're wasting what? Wasting your time. Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm 14 verse 1. 14 1. Yes. Follow after charity. Follow, some verses, follow after love. Or some verses, pursue what? Love. love. And desire spiritual gifts. And desire, it's okay. If you want to desire spiritual gift, appreciate spiritual gift. Understand that in this house of God, every one of us have different gifts. Do not Go and put yourself in a competition. A competition that I am better than someone. The moment you make yourself or present yourself, you're better than anyone in the house of God, you've lost it. Yeah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He said desire it. He didn't say pursue it or try to complain. That this person, why is it that it's this person that is doing only this? That's why I try to make us avoid that mentality of it's only this person that is doing Desire other gifts God has given you. Amen. Don't feel bad that someone is doing a routine or don't feel bad that it is my turn. The gift of the Holy Spirit is not an about turn. Whatever gift that is given to you, utilize it. The gift of the Holy Spirit is not all about shining. God will give it to you. Everybody have their gift. Just pray, God, God please let my gift shine. As I said, pursue love and desire the gift. And he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again that, look, the gift of the Holy Spirit is given by Yahweh, not by anyone. It's given by Yahweh. Don't feel bad that someone's gift seems like it's better. No, 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 no. No gift is better than the other. Please understand that. Because someone is here preaching, does not mean my gift is better than yours. Because someone is good at drums, does not mean his gift is better than yours. Just grow in your gift. The Holy Spirit has been giving it to you. Grow in it. If you are a prayer warrior, pray like it, your life depends on it. Deliver the children of God through your prayers. If your gift is in spiritual vision, just prepare yourself so that God will be speaking to you. This part I'm about to say, those who will hear me say this part will say weird people. There are times the Spirit of God will tell me, you can't have carnal knowledge of your wife from time this to time that. I don't have any choice. Why? He's trying to prepare me that I may use the gift that he has given me. And there are times you will find yourself, you want to do a fasting. I need to go to the house of God and equip myself. You are equipping that gift God has given you. There are times some of us will come here and stay for hours and spend time. You are actually growing a gift in you. You need, because if you don't water that gift through prayers and as best as you can, you will lose it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Have I offended anyone? If I have not offended anyone, let us glorify God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So please, in closing, the gift of the Holy Spirit you were given already on this day of the Pentecost, make sure you grow it. Make sure you nurture it. Make sure you, so that's how you sustain that gift. Make sure you apply it. Don't just sit down and wish, I wish I'm the one doing that. Or oh, I wish I'm the one. No. Whatever gift you have and you're ready to execute it in the house of God, come on board. Nobody will stop you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God is a wonderful father. He has given us. God read it in 1 Corinthians 13. He's there. He said he's the one that gives gifts. Go to 1 Corinthians again, chapter 14, verse 28. All that you see. He talks about gifts. So, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, we may have seen in our gift, but it's not the same. We may have your gift is different from mine. Some of your gift may be just come here, clap, sing, and go. But if you want God to take, someone wants to say to you, Pastor, I really want prayers to know what my gift is. You don't need to come to me. I'm just giving you an instance. I guarantee if you go into prayers, the Lord will show you your gift. You probably already started executing your gift. Your gift may be just be giving people a helping hand. 
Your gift may be, you have 10 cents, you are giving somebody 2 cents. Just like that, without even remorse. It may be your gift. All you need to understand is, you've been given a gift, and God wants you to use that gift to his glory. Let your focus be unto God. In the light of the day, God summarized the Pentecost for us today. He made us understand that he is with us. He, you know, he's with us all the way. He's forgiven us. He's already moved us. But he's with us. So, in closing, my brothers and sisters, we have been blessed by the Holy Spirit. And we've been called up to repentance. And thank God, we all are part of the 3,000 that was saved. If you are part of the 3,000, rise up and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are really part of that 3,000, and you, I didn't say if you want to be, because if by now you are not, you are still wanting to be, there's no time. We are running out of time. In fact, you don't have time if by now you are, I want to be. By now, you are now part. If you are part of the 3,000 that was saved, that was repented unto the glory of Yahweh and saved, shout hallelujah. Shall be permanent.